Hi and welcome to MRTV here from Mobile World Congress 2019 in Barcelona. I'm here with Leland Hedges. Hi, good to see hey, you. Nice to see you. And um, Leland is the commercial director of Pico for for the European areas and more exactly. areas. But this is, yes. So um, let's talk about Pico. Sure. Pico, you are a headset company. Yes. We are a headset company, and you are doing headsets. Mostly for business to business to consumer for businesses. Could, could I say it? Could, could I say it like this? Sure. I mean, the, I think the it is absolutely our business is B two B, but most of the fees that we work with are, are dealing with C. But even right, then, right. Um, it's not true consumer in like an entertainment sense. Right. In in some cases, it is people going to VR arcades or watching VR cinema. But in many cases, it's people who are for education or training. So in the workforce, or in the case of medical, it's people who are in hospital beds or in hospice care. So they're consumers, but they're they're not even true. They're not buying the devices directly themselves. They're being given the devices as part of their treatment or as part of their education. So I think um, your your booth here at Mobile World Congress shows this off perfectly Thank because you. we have some partners here who are using the the Pico devices for their businesses to yep. make their businesses work. Right? Yep. So so we have here um, really interesting um, business cases. Like I've already t um, talked to them. Like in flight VR, they are doing in flight VR entertainment, like for Iberia and for Flixbus. And um, yeah, they are using your devices in order to make their business work. Exactly. Right? They, they looked at, and I'm sure you you heard this in your previous discussions, right. they looked across all of the industry and they were trying to find a partner that could offer two things, the best performance and the most flexibility. Mm -hmm. And they were able to get both of them by working with Pico. So their devices are super customized with just one button press. They boot up, they're loading the application for in-flight. So a flight, a flight attendant, a flight steward or stewardess can press one button and hand the headset to a customer, and that's it. That's the amount of interaction that, you, that the airline needs to worry about, which is just you know, very different from VR that we all remember from a couple of years ago, where you, you had to connect it to a phone, it didn't pair correctly, or you had to have a PC. So and this is like incredibly easy to use. And then also you're looking at, in this case, this is the newest model. So it's, it's 4K resolution, which I think, outside of some very early projects, this is the first mainstream mass adoption 4K panel that you're going to be able to get. Um, also, it's running the 835 processor, which is a pretty modern processor. It's, it's the most advanced processor in any standalone VR headset. So, yeah, these are both you know, incredibly flexible devices in terms of setup and operation, but they're also powerful. So that's that's why a partner like like we are opted to work with us. Exactly. That, that makes um, perfect sense. So for some other businesses like Oculus, you would have this Oculus store that would automatically boot up, and you don't have this customization. So I think I think these companies they need to uh, customize the headsets for their business case. And then they can just work together with you, and you offer them exactly this. Yeah, they. The goal in every case when we're working yeah. with a uh, with the customer is to remove as many barriers between the technology and their their customers. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, you know, their customers are individuals. In some cases, their customers like virtuoso, which I think you're also going to talk about. Yes. Their customer is is biz is big corporate companies that are trying to figure out ways to make presentations more dynamic, more interesting, more engaging, and remove the technical issues that you have in VR. So we work with them and they chose us. I'm sure you're going to talk about their, their yes. the amazing... There's another video that yeah. I'm going to link in the description, so if you want to Perfect. find out more about them, you can. But they, they make the process of setting up a meeting and giving people headsets like seamless. It's so slick. It's PowerPoint for VR. It's just like we just want to enable the ideas that these other companies have about how to bring VR into the real world, how to solve practical uh, issues that VR is so good at. Like in the world of medical, we're working with a number of medical partners where uh, VR can be a direct replacement for other treatment options. So things like uh, vision correction, 
pain management, rehabilitation. And you can take something that would cost maybe five or ten thousand dollars and, and be able to do a service plus a headset for you know, absolutely less than half, 10, 20, 30 percent of that cost. Like the there's real world cost savings, there's real world implications for this technology. Uh, I think if I can have one word of advice for a lot of people who are probably watching your video, yeah. who, are, who are developers, yeah. I know that we all got excited about VR because of gaming. Right. I, I worked at PSVR in a previous life. Okay. I love games. But I think the, the development skills and the, the amazing work that's being done in, in the indie gaming community, if, if those people are looking for ways to basically um, help fund their next passion project, the world of, of B2B VR right now is super hot and looking for amazing developer content and, and developer skills. So like, if you're a developer and you're really good in Unity or really, really know VR, try and find a business person, try and set up a company, and try and bring VR into these like real world applications. That's a really good point, because I think um, for businesses, the business case for them is so clear. Right? They, okay, they pay, I don't know, a couple of hundred thousand dollars, and it, like, uh, the money is going to, the investment is being recouped so fast, right? Exactly. And they don't have to buy the machine that they now have in virtual reality. Yeah. Right? So I think um, also that's why uh, Pico kind of like, you, you pivoted a bit away from consumer, right? I mean, I can remember the first time that I that I heard about Pico. It was with a standalone headset, with which was with games. I think Copland could it be? Yeah, it so was the, like uh, two years ago exactly, or something. Exactly. Right? So we, we we announced the original Copland at um, Gamescom in Germany. Right. And and that was a gaming first consumer device because in China we've always been a hybrid company that is consumer okay. and B two B. Got it. And so in China, our business for a long time until we started doing investing in our international market was like half business, half consumer, by roughly by sales. Okay. Then we looked at the international market and, and there are a million small considerations and strategic and technical things that we thought about, but you know, when you are trying China is a very distinct market from the rest of the world as it relates to VR. So in China there isn't Daydream, there isn't Oculus, there isn't some of these uh, brands and companies that dominate Western VR. So there's a lot of room for us to be, you know, we are, depending on who you ask, who you believe, what market share you'll get, you know, the one or two headset in China in the consumer space. Yeah, that makes sense. Then. Yeah, right. So if, you're, if you've got this great consumer market, but you don't necessarily want to make the kind of investment that Oculus or HTC or anyone Daydream makes in content, how can you bring VR out of China and into the global market? And so what we did was we looked at the, we started talking to developers, trying to solve the problems that they had in the Western market, which is all of these consumer devices are not very good, have some issues when it comes to enterprise. So you know, even going back to Samsung Gear, like most people, in the early days, we're using Samsung gear, like on roller coasters and trade shows, and even in so, hospitals. So complicated, right? The phone, you have to put it inside. Yeah. It doesn't pair yeah, sometimes. It's, yeah, exactly. It's it too complicated. Yeah, the right. battery. So I can remember. It. So there were all these people uh, in the market when Ego had the launch, launched the original Goblin, that were taking the Goblin and putting it into these business applications, and they were having these friction points. And so as we started to solve their problems, when it came to launching the Neo, and then especially for the G2, which is, you know, this is the newest model, but there's two that were released in September of last year. So for the G2, it just was a perfect fit uh, to be able to offer kiosk mode, to be able to offer easy to replace phone mass with the PU. So solving issues around hygiene, uh, solving issues around booting kiosk mode, booting up the device. You know, we now have a number of partners who can do MDM, which is uh, remote device management. So these these devices are connected to the internet. Somebody remotely can update them, can check on the status of the battery. We have a, a great uh, relationship with a bunch of content partners who do uh, multi-headset streaming. So people like uh, Showtime VR, uh, VR Sync, like. These are just great applications that, again, solve these friction points. So in the case of those, like, you can just be running people through VR cinemas, really, and, and, and like trade shows or 
whatever. You can just you can turn um, make it much easier to operate 360 video uh, events. So anyway, we we we've, we've built out this entire ecosystem of partners and services, and we feel like the G2 now is the like the best device for B2B VR markets. It's a great business case. Yeah. So um, yeah, let's talk a moment about uh, your latest, uh, yeah, exactly. greatest, right? So so this is the um, G2 4K. G2 right? 4K. So exactly. it has an even better screen now. Tell us a bit more about it. So it's the 3K. We had a 3K screen on the original G2 and G2 Pro. This is now a model that has a 4K display. We've we've darkened the the plastic a little yeah. bit. So. Uh, it's more serious. Yeah, it's, I mean, cosmetic. It's it's it's, it's, now, it's more fashionable. Yeah, of course. Uh, looks slicker, more futuristic. But um, I mean, it's it's very much uh, another member of the G2 family. But it's well, we we like to. The positioning for this headset is for cinema. It's it's the best uh, G2 device for watching 360 content. So one of the trade-offs we had to make to support the 4K display is that we reduce the frame rate down from 90 on the other two to 75. Okay. So this is like the will be we think the best device for a long time. Well, it's definitely the first device with a 4K display yes. for being able to do 360 video content. I think if you're doing um, VR that is more immersive or interactive especially, then you're gonna, there's reason still to use the older G2s for other applications. Okay. So gaming is, a, is gonna, you get some benefits, let's just put it this way, going from 3K to 4K, yeah. you have to push a lot more pixels, mm -hmm. so with the same processor, so there's trade-offs. Right. So I've, I've actually uh, checked it before already on CES, and I, I came away very impressed with the picture quality. Good. So it was probably uh, yeah one of the best pictures that I've seen so far on standalone headsets. Amazing. Um, and yeah, so you cannot see any screen more effect anymore, basically, yeah. right? It's like it's like wow. I, so it's I like, what really I like nice. to say is like I came from the world of DK1, yeah, same here, DK2, and of course, Morpheus, yeah. right, right. And I just remember like seeing every pixel, right? And but it's not possible anymore. Yeah, you. I think, honestly, I mean, there are other people who are going for, there are other 6,000 euro price point headsets out there now that are like 16K or 8K or whatever they end up being. Um, for me, 4K is already... Sweet spot. Yeah, it's like such it's an improvement. Good already. It yeah. looks so much better. So, yeah. I'm sure in another two years we'll have another conversation. I'll be talking about 6K or yeah. 8K or whatever. Yeah, for sure. For now, so, it's, 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 okay. 4K is a great resolution. Got it. And um, the G2 4K, when is it coming out? So it will be available in China before the end of March, but I'm not giving, able to give this specific release date. Uh, and then the it will take another two or three weeks to be available in Europe. So in April will be uh, the European and US release. But again, in US and Europe, you have to come come to our website. There's a form. It takes two minutes. Yeah, right. When you complete the form, then you can basically we will uh, get back in contact with you and arrange for uh, a sample. So for any developer who has a who is working on an active VR project, a B2B project, B2B to C, we will provide a sample, and then we will uh, give them a couple weeks to do some testing, some technical support. And then we try and work together to put together a uh, pilot, typically 20, 30, 40 headsets. Then when the pilot's successful, usually at that point the company is is, is able to do repeatable business of right. some kind. Got it. You know, so like in the case of in-flight VR, I think they're very close to announcing some new right. deals. Yeah. That'd be good. And uh, Virtuoso, for instance, just signed up some new partners. I think we hope this is public. Pfizer, I think, is one that they that they are that placed in order. So, yeah, I mean, as as our partners grow, yeah, we grow, we grow. We grow. It makes sense. Exactly. It makes so much sense. And um, can you talk about pricing already for this, or is this still on the reps? We so our pricing is um, depends on volume, depends okay. on the situation, case by case basis, exactly. uh, volume. All right. Cool, very nice. So thank you so much for giving us a better understanding of what Pico is doing yep. and for telling us about uh, yeah the G2 4K. So definitely a very interesting for uh, for companies who want to enable their VR business. Get in touch with Leland, get in touch with yep. Pico. They can provide you uh, these babies for perfect um, 
VR consumption, yeah. right? In, in virtual reality. Thank so you um, they can go to pico.com. Yeah, sorry, picointeractive.com. Yeah. Pico, pico minus interactive. Or uh, dash. Yeah, dash, dash. Yeah. Pico dash interactive.com. I'm going to put it down in the description so you can get in touch with Leland and his team Perfect. to make things happen. So thank you so much. Yeah. And um, yeah, looking forward to meet you the next time at any of these nice events. GDC, we'll see, be I'll there. be there. Okay, see you there again. See you there. All right, so I really hope that you enjoyed this and that you have a better understanding now of what Pico is actually doing. And yeah, give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and if you have not yet subscribed to MOTV yet, do so now. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.